You got in a plane and you know you're not gonna come back in that plane, you know? Tiago was shaking. He was shaking. So I said, Diego, I'm feeling I'm going to die. Osmar was like a praying in the corner, you know? And when you got in the plane, like Professor Felipe, the girls, they I was scared. Like it was scared. His life. That's part, the death is a part of the life, you know? And that's the way I face it, you know? Valeu, irmão! Caralho, achei que... Boa, boa! Amazing! Caralho, amazing! Então, everyone is smiling, you know? Everyone is happy, you know? And, and, and it's good, it's warm, you know? Like, uh, if people's warm, it's friendly, you know? Like, uh, it's heavy, like, a, History, you know, like something magic is there, you know, but it's sad at the same time, you know, like they, that could be, Brazil could be like a heaven, you know. I got that rock there. Competing in Brazil, Rodrigo Carvalho tested himself in hundreds of competitions, winning well over 100 medals and a world championship. Today, he coaches and trains his students for competition. Not just about your body, you know, like uh, you need to put a few things together and you need, to, you need to look for the balance of your body with your mind, you know, a good strategy, you know, good mindset up in your soul. A lot of people forget about the soul, about the mind, and, you know, just, just care about the technique in the body. To myself, you know, I need all of them together. 
Gracie Baja is supported by an army of black belts across five continents, world champions in all weight classes. Step over, all back, and my knee comes up. Just like that. Okay? First of all, uh, guys, uh, my name is Igor Gracie. You know, uh, thanks for uh, thanks to uh, Rodrigo for uh, having me here. So I have good friends from Ottawa, from Montreal, and here on the West Coast. So I'm always looking for an excuse to come up. Okay, so guys, have any uh, any parties, birthdays? <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, so look, what I wanna do is bring my hip to his hip. That's also gonna make the choke powerful. Okay, just like you guys gonna choke here, so you guys sit through over here. So position yourself high on his back, right here low. The gears tight, loosen up. Okay, just feet. Now come low, deep behind the shoulder, the elbow, hold the belt, sit right here. Extend and down. Okay guys, let's go, come on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Keep rolling. And then I gotta roll again. And Professor goes and I go again. Do I got it? Like a cross roll. Gotta get, gotta be here. Walk and stop him to roll. I can stop with my head too. Attention here, guys. I noticed a lot of you guys been losing the arm. Guys, it's very simple. Of course, he's gonna be moving this arm to the fan. Once I'm here, I roll in, then I pull. Once I'm here, look at his arm over there. Turn down, Barry. Now, now, I go back. One hand up. Yes. Sit, and now, yeah, 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 that's it. What do you think about that one? Take it off the gloves, take it off the rules, take it off the time, and put it the fighters there. The Jiu Jitsu will prevail. Definitely, no doubt. No. And then, if you the people like it or not, I'm not saying that about like, uh, because I'm a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighter or not. I mean, no. That's the history, it's right there to tell you. Just no. That's what the family Gracie did back in Brazil with everyone before, maybe even way before, yeah, decades before the UFC. That's what they did, you know? And what the Royce Grace did was something they are doing like for 40, 50 years, you know? This guy here, he loves what he doing. He loves training, he loves to teach. He's a good man, 
in this good hand. Thank you guys for, for everything and I mean very blessed to be here today. Our team just continue growing stronger and stronger and stronger. And it's amazing to realize that having a team present in the five continents, we have today more than ever a huge chain with no weak links. Can you imagine, guys, <coughs> one little guy like this such going to the tournament in this age? and start to know how to deal with defeat, with lose, and with win. They start to face the challenge, to step on their mat, and if a lot of, come here, professor, please, if a lot of people will get scared of, you know? It's a little guy like this, can step there, fight, and get defeat, and cry. That's good when they cry, but they're learning, you know? Can you imagine how good, how much benefit they're gonna have in their life? As I said, it's very important because everything happened for a reason, right? So, it's become from Korea to become my friend, my brother, and I'm so proud to be this brother. Okay. Have two things you have control in your life. Totally control. The smile on your face and your attitude. Two things you have totally control. Nobody can take away from you. Put a smile on your face when I always talk to someone. They're gonna forget about what you said, but never gonna forget the way you make them feel. I switched to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and I'd rather have a great card because they swim, you know? And it really helped me like uh, to heal my all my injuries and all. Helped me a lot in my cardio. And, and also this works kind of like a meditation, you know what I mean? Like uh, because it's such like a learning sport. When you are just swimming you can hear nothing, just you by yourself. And I spend here like uh, 30 minutes, 40 minutes every time I come to swim. And it's like in 30, 40 minutes, I not hear nothing. As I start to like think about my life, you know, uh, start to plan something I gotta do, you know, try to find the solution for a few problems, you know, I have. Magno, I'm talking about my friend, you know, I had my best friend, his name is Magnum. That's why my, my son's called Magnum. Oh, he's after my, my best friend. And how can I say, like, uh, it's quite hard, you know, like, uh, May 31st, you know, it's the same day my dad's birthday, you know. Got in the car, come back home, and I remember I was just beside my dad, you know, with my whole family, and then my phone just rings, you know. Got on my phone, uh, Magnum, he was came back, and this friend, he was so drunk, he was driving for him, you know? And on the way back, they got internet. Like, a, it was a major accident, you know? like it was bad. In that moment, I told myself, like, uh, I, gotta, I gotta prepare myself to lose him, you know? Such like, try to calm down, you know? And say, like, yeah, he's going, you know? And because, like, uh, the, 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 the work that you should do as a physiotherapist and intensive care for, for babies on premature and pediatric, you used to lose a lot of kids, you know, like you used to like, see the kids dying, you know, the parents coming and crying, you know, and that hurts you, you know, but it makes you stronger too, you know, and, and you make you understand a little bit more about the concept about life and that, you know, and when I was there, for the first time in my life I was losing someone I love. Like look at him and just start to say like you know, a few things for him, you know. And in that moment, like the doctor was keeping trying because 
they knew me or no. Uh, of course, they tried to, to, to do their best, you know, but they knew it's, it's over, you know, and I remember the doctor would look at me, like I tried to bring him back, you know, and look at me, and I remember looking at him and just, you know, say like, and I never gonna forget the day my dad said to me, one hour, an hour conversation, he's looking at me so proud, said like, you know what, you know why I'm so happy about you, Rodrigo, I'm so proud of you, because I made someone better than me. And I really wish one day I can tell that for him, for Magnum. You know? And I know that this responsibility is, is on me, you know. And I just love that little, little guy so much. And it's funny because uh, he's my best friend. And right now, like everything I do, you know, like I go to Girls Grind, I took him with me, you know, everything I do, you know, like he's with me. The Gracie Baja team participates in dozens of events all year round in Vancouver. There is always something to do in this beautiful city. And I said, okay, now I need to make the Holy Mary in my arm. That was the idea, you know, they put the phrase in her. But I was thinking I was waiting for the right moment, you know. And they were, were the right moment came. I think this time in my life, after the whole thing about Mag, you know, and my son's Mag, you know, the gene, you know, and the, everything is happening in my life right now, you know. Uh, and the problems I faced since I moved to Canada and everything I overcame, you know, everything I succeed, you know, and, and they, this is just the, everything that was happened and everything I was asking for her, you know, to help me and she gave to me that all the protection I need, you know, and I felt like a, I, I made the first tattoo just the first like seven years ago. And for seven years I was waiting for the right moment and I felt like it was, like she talked to me and said, like, now it's time. And that's when I was praying in the church here in Vancouver, I'll go every Sunday, I was praying there. It's something came to me and like, uh, you know, I was just telling thanks, thanks for the, for, for a few things I, I have asked and she gave to me. And, and then it came in my mind in that time. It came in my mind, you know, like, and I said, now it's time. Like my friends from Brazil, like a Tusa, Baratinha. Man, I, I remember so many times we're training them, like uh, they're asking for money at the end of the, the training. Hey, do, do you have one box, two box to put a gas on the on the motorcycle? Why don't you come back home? Yeah. You want to be sorry right now, man. I don't know. You want to bet some money on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I don't know. That's going to be a tough play for him. Brazil, the country with the most happy and the most healthy people on the planet. The food is amazing and the fresh juice is enriching. Everywhere you go, you will hear somebody laughing and always enjoy the beautiful sunshine. Vamos ali conversar. E eu olhei, pô, e tinha uma mochila na esteira. A gente tava do lado da esteira, tipo a esteira aqui. E o Renan assim, e eu aqui do lado da esteira aqui. E não tinha mais ninguém. Os caras botaram por último a mochila. Foi a primeira. Foi a primeira, meu irmão. Tinha mais ninguém no aeroporto, rapaz. O vovô, o advogado. E as cores lá. Vai coxinha, pô. Vai coxinha. Vai coxinha. This is the White River, we call. Uh, I used to live just like a few minutes away from here. 
it's their place. I used to come out almost every day, jump this river here and swim to improve my cardio. And I know it sounds like a little bit crazy for you guys. <laughs> no, we are in the middle of the Amazon. This river like is full of fish, anaconda, alligators, but nothing happened for me so far. No, I hope it's not going to be today. It was incredible to watch someone have the strength to swim across a river with a strong current. And even more incredible, they had the courage to do it in the Amazon. Hey guys, we are under, I think like 38 degrees right now, and we just brew, you know, we run in the sun, sand, and under 38 degrees, you know, but that's helped you to improve your cardio, and man, that's what I miss, you know, unfortunately, like, I love living. Canada, I think I'm never gonna leave, but I miss a little bit this, you know, the contact with nature, you know, this kind of nature, you know. And one important thing about the river is <clears throat> the current is strong. You can't see, but it's freaking strong. And you need to, to swim in a little bit in one angle, otherwise you're gonna stop far, far away and definitely you don't want this to happen, you know. And yeah. That, that's the one part of the city, just so you can understand a little bit better. A few blocks left side where I used to live, two, three blocks for the right side is where my Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym was. And I wish to go to the school in the morning, come back home, go to the train, the noon train, under 45 degrees, the noon is like, now it's like a, now it's like a school because it's starting cooling down because it's almost it's 4 p.m. That's why it's 38, you know, but noon, it's 45, 48. Then you strain, it's freaking hot. You, they, they feel and you are dying. You know, after one hour of straining, you are dying. Like we, we, we you strain two hours here. They finish, go home, eat, rest a little bit, wake up four o'clock and come to my workout. And then swim all the way get it here, go for a run, finish, rest a little bit, swim back, and go home, eat something, and hit the gym for eight o'clock. Train, and after my train, I used to go and lift the weights just a little bit. And that's it, man. That's, that's one of the reason the guys from the north of Brazil, they are top fighters, you know? That is our playground. <laughs> There are hundreds of gyms like this in Brazil, with open windows and open doors. These fighters train for endless hours every day of the week. This is where jiu-jitsu champions are born.
certo? O que, que eu fiz com o contato do, do cara lá com o Peter, com o Sérgio? Foi assim, gosto uma academia que você vai abrir. Rodrigo is well known in northern Brazil and is often invited by the media for a radio or television interview. Ele foi trabalhar no Tepequen. Minha avó moraram lá. Minha mãe quando veio, minha mãe nasceu em Goiânia, pouca gente sabe disso. Ela veio para cá com três anos de idade e foi o lugar primeiro lugar que eles moraram. Então aquele local é um local especial para mim. Foi onde meu avô começou os negócios dele, começou os trabalhos, né? Rio de Janeiro, stunning, vibrant, with a feeling of freedom. Ten years ago, they used to come down to the street and stop all the cars and rob. You know what I mean? It was crazy. And then the cops come and such like shoot each other. You know, like a, in this area here it was like right now we stop here like a, ten years ago we used to be like a freak and like a, oh my god. It's now like that. If, if your camera there, you know, and if my watch here, it's still Rio de Janeiro, just a big city like uh, Chicago, New York. You know. In your other, like a big city, and it's danger, you know what I mean? Just the contact with the nature, just like, yeah, uh, just make me feel so good, you know? That's this. A few things is making me feel good. I could sit down here and just like for one hour, you know, and I just love it. You know, you can see the peace, just the wind. Beautiful view, you know, the ocean. Uh, I just love this place. This area right here is kind of like a hot spot to, to surf here in the south area you know, of Rio. And they have a lot of gyms in this area here, all you know, Jiu Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym. And they surf is quite like a related with Jiu Jitsu. And here, when the guy used to come to, to surf, you know, and you should see a lot of fighters here, like, uh, surf, you know, in this area here, right here. Let me follow up with Come on, open the floor, watch. Let's try. You know the good thing about here? You can work out here, like those guys. No t-shirts, bare feet. With this view, for free. Yeah. Professor Rodrigo, before he went to Canada to expand Jiu-Jitsu, to expand Gracie Barra and represent Mestre Carlos Gracie Jr., he already had a long history with Jiu-Jitsu in Brazil and with Gracie Barra. Uh, Professor Rodrigo grew up in the northern part of Brazil, and this part of the country is known for creating great fighters, great instructors, uh, this part of the country is known for having in its roots a deep jiu-jitsu culture. Uh, we know that uh, fighters like Jacaré, that today is fighting UFC and he is a world champion, came from that part of the country. We know uh, Bibiano, Fredson, Mestre Oswaldo Alves, Mestre Pascual Duarte, all these guys they come from the northern part of Brazil. And once Rodrigo began studying and he went to the university, he made a move to a more central part of the country, Brasilia. And in Brasilia, Gracie Barra has a big team. Over there, Rodrigo was able to exchange a lot of information with our instructors. When I left to Brasilia, to start my university, you know. It was a hard time for my family, you know, like a financial time, it was a hard time to leave. And I remember I came here and I asked them, you know, to protect me and then to, to give me the direction to this new challenge, you know. I was moving, I was just like a 20, 21 years old. 
And and I, I told them, look, when I finish my university, I'm gonna bring my diploma here for you, you know? And I remember the day, man, I came here and with my diploma when I finished, you know, it was something like a special, you know? Studying at the University of Brasilia, Rodrigo graduated with a degree in physiotherapy and a master's degree in pediatric and newborn intensive care. Mod of God uh, clinic. He's like a Dr. Alex. He's a physiotherapist too. A friend of mine. Six years ago, we started this project together. We used to work together in the hospital, and then we had this idea to open a clinic, and then we sit down and we plan and. It was funny because when I decide to move to Canada, we are a few weeks to open the clinic, you know, and I told him, I said, Alec, I'm leaving, man. I'm leaving, I'm gonna go to North America, I'm gonna spend a few months there and buy my, my part of the business. And he said, no, man. Then in Canada, especially my student, you know, when I train a few and then you used to say, Professor, you're a bigger guy, but you're moving like a small guy. Your movies <laughs> is just like a small guy. Is the answer. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> is their answer right here. I learned from this small guy, you know, Pascual, he's well known Jiu Jitsu community, you know, for his great guard, you know, it's very dangerous guard game. He's he's a well, he's he's a good passer too, pass guard. And player, but his guard is so strong and so dangerous, you know. And that's the reason I I, I move and I, and I play like a small guy, you know. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> his nickname is Papa. You know, he knows everything, you know what I mean? Like. Uh... <laughs> A million years ago, his was a volcano, and this place is kind of like uh, special to me because my grandfather, but uh, he's someone that look, I, I inspire me and I, I really look up to him, you know, because. When he was, he was from Fortaleza, uh, state of CIA in Brazil, and he was 12 years old. By himself, his decision, he left home, and he told his mom, I'm just gonna come back and home again when I get rich. He had that dream, you know, to go explore the world, you know, work, make money, get rich, you know, just 12 years old. And then he left. I really look up to him because he was a humble guy, you know, treat everyone well have a lot of values, you know. He's a businessman, but always with a, like a strong character, you know, and help a lot of people. And I know uh, he used to come in here sometimes, you know, and just spend a few, few minutes here, uh, look at this beautiful view. Ten years ago, I was arriving here and we parked the truck in this direction here, you remember? 
full of mats, and we are unloading the mats to start the social project here. Uh, I asked the guys that time, the owners, the building, if I could like uh, put the mats there as so teacher jiu-jitsu. I told him uh, it would be for free, you know, I'm not gonna charge nothing. He said, man, I'm not gonna charge nothing. If you wanna help the community, you can come, you know, put your mats in. And the day I, well, I arrived here with the mats was me and my uncle. We are unloading the mats and put it right here. And when I opened the door, I had a few guys like a practicing, like a dance, you know, like kind of hip hop inside. And one of them was Vanderson. And he just came out and said, hey, do we need a help? And I got a surprise. No, yeah, yeah, for sure. Then he such like, help me and my uncle unload the, the, the truck. And then he asked me, well, what is this for? And I told him like, okay, I'm gonna start to, like a teach Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for free here. And it's like a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for yeah, kind of like a judo. It's like a man, nice. I, can I train? Can I train? Can I be your student? Friend? You are my first student already. You know, you help me here and love the mats. Like yeah, that's your first lesson. And then he started. He was my first student. He started like help me here. You know, set up the mats. It's such the first class. And today he's a brown belt. And he's met his wife, Erica, here at the social project too. A few days later, she came, asked to join. She started to train, the both of them met. And as you can see, look at that little one. You know, the both of them, they are brown belt. They are in, they are in charge for the social project today. It's pretty cool. Qual uh, faixa dele? Caesar. And he's a gray belt, for sure. He's gonna be in charge for the kids and uh, program like pretty soon. Referência lá, os pais vêm quando a gente fala como é, que tem ficha de presença, que o aluno vai chegar e vai tem todo um acompanhamento ali. E o pessoal gosta muito disso. Uh, he said like the discipline, the respect, the the main things. Uh, he said also everyone knows about jiu-jitsu, but they 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 know better. It's the Gracie Bars organized. That's what the parents like. Uh, they bring the kids and know it's gonna have like attendance card, it's gonna have like a follow-up with the parents to to talk about like to have a feedback how the kids is doing at home, at school, and how the kids is doing here, you know. And he said that's the way they're working here and it's been working very well. <laughs> The Varjão Social Project unites the community and helps to keep the kids off the street. Abriu a porta lá do, do barracão, o professor Vandos estava lá treinando hip hop com os amigos dele ali. O próximo passo será a preta. Então, Gustavo Gomes.
let's talk about Thais Fernandes. She's my daughter. Uh, she is not my biological daughter, but she is my daughter, no? And the Thais story starts when she, I started my social project in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, on a favela. It's a poor neighbor, like a slum, you know? Like a poor neighbor, very poor. And, and then one day, this girl, I remember like it today, you know, skinny girl, like 12, 11 years old, 12 years old, like yeah, old clothes, you know, like dirty, you know. She came and showed up at the door, I was just watching, you know, and when it finished, I came there, hey, how's it going? And like, uh, she's like, I want to know, I want to start to train Jiu Jitsu, and it's talking to me, looking down, you know. And then right away, I, I felt, I felt like, man, no, she must have some problem, you know what I mean? Like, she was so humble, so, like, looking down all the time. I said, okay, let's train, come tomorrow, you know? And, and then she came, she started, like, studying, she, after her, she finished her high school. She was trained, but just a little bit. And then I asked her, okay, what do you want to be? She's like, I want to be a physiotherapist just like you. I just like, oh, my God. She just fallen every single step. You know, I was world champion, she was too, you know what I mean? Now she want to become, like, a... She want to become like a physiotherapist. And then I said, okay, you're going to be a physiotherapist. And then she finished her university, you know. not just change one person's life. Maybe you will change one generation. Especially in Brazil, when the people are born poor, it's impossible they're gonna die poor. And she born poor, she have opportunity, she finished her school, she finished her university, she have a job now. She done good, she gonna do good, she gonna have her kids, and for sure her kids are gonna have the opportunity to go to university too. And right there, you change one entire generation. Who will? I want to do that one there. Which one? That one there. I think that teaching, your teaching style is going to be the way your teacher, your professor, or your instructors have uh, coached you or taught you. And then you're going to develop your own style. Um, sometimes we get people that want to, they're interested in teaching here. And we usually take them under our wings for a couple of months and then we tell them, like, you know, it's okay, like, develop your own style. And uh, I find myself learning, actually, a lot from the guys that maybe I coached a little bit into uh, coaching. Um, maybe that person is a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, and a little bit more skilled. And then I find myself learning from the way they teach. So I learn from everyone, um, again, from... Uh, being a good person, being a good training partner, being a good uh, teammate, and being a good uh, teacher. Right away? Cool. We cover my guard. What's that, Zimani? Oh, 
And get on the mat, you know, and train with them because everyone is here. Doesn't matter because they started training to be a fighter or to get in shape or to defend themselves. For some reason, you know, doesn't matter, but everyone here is willing, you know, to become a better person, to become better in something, you know, to improve, to strive, you know. And that's good, it's a good environment, you know. Everyone here wants to learn, you know. And we have a, such a good atmosphere in this gym, you know, like so many kids, so many guys, so many girls, you know. When you're fighting like him, you have the opportunity to, to know yourself, you know, and when you are fighting, you have nothing left. You are so tired, and wish you pass out, you know, and you are losing, you are in bad position. And then you get like strength and energy out of the blue. You don't know where it's coming from, but it came and then you can fight back. And on top of that, you can win. That is your spirit, that's your soul's fighting, you know? And that's where it's coming our true strength. That my spirit is never gets old. I, I, I know that, you know? The same spirit that I have 10 years old, when I was 10 years old, I have now. It's the same one. And I can't tell you, my spirit is getting old. No, my body is getting old. <laughs> that I can tell you, but it's not my spirit. I not just talk about your fight, you know? But for everything to face my fears, to face my problems in my life, you know, to reach my, the goals that I want, the strength, you know, I take out my strength from my spirit. <laughs>